the light started to appear. And that's when I realized that this was death. This was my death. When I died, I was 31. What I experienced from that moment on just changed my life forever. My name is Betty J. Eady. I am 78 years old. I had a near-death experience. My name is Jessie Sawyer, and I've had a near-death experience. If anybody had told me 10 years ago that I would have had a near-death experience, I would not have believed them. I didn't believe in these things. I didn't even believe in God anymore. I had started becoming sick and I was going to different doctors and specialists and nobody could figure out what was wrong with me. And eventually, after about nine months of different tests and smaller procedures, they decided that a hysterectomy would help them kind of get a better idea of what was happening inside of me. They didn't find anything wrong on the inside. Um, they did a uterine and ovarian biopsy and everything was clear. So after two nights in the hospital, I was released to go home. It had probably only been six to eight hours and I just felt this extreme pain in my stomach. It felt like someone had taken out my insides and put them in a blender blended them on low power, poured gasoline on them, lit them on fire, and then shoved them back inside of me. So my husband rushed me to the ER. They admitted me. I had very low blood pressure. My heart rate was 145. I was running a low grade fever and they did some scans and found out that I was bleeding internally. I didn't have enough blood in my system to really put me back into a surgery. So I started receiving antibiotics. I had blood transfusions. It was probably between like two and four o'clock in the morning. And when I slept, I, I, there was no way I ever could escape the pain. But I'm staring at the wall and it was like, the best way I can describe it is that my eyes opened and then they opened again. And when they opened again, I was in this endless misty white room it was like just this space. And the very first thing that I realized was that I was able to stand up straight, which is something that I hadn't been able to do since the surgery. And I was astonished at how perfect I felt. No pain. I just, I felt like the perfect version of myself. And so that really stuck with me. And in the distance, I saw somebody kind of waiting and I immediately, even though I, I didn't see this person at first, I immediately recognized who it was and it was um, one of my best friends named Anthony who had died about two years before. And I was just so happy to see him. I wanted to run up to him, I wanted to hug him, I wanted to tell him how much everybody missed him and then I realized that this was about me. This wasn't some joyous reunion that, that something serious was happening. And then behind Anthony and to my right, the light started to appear. And that's when I realized that this was death. This was my death. And Anthony was there to take me home. The light started off as this shimmer and then it grew there's no way you can describe it. It is the most profound, most unconditional love. And the light is everything that ever was and ever will be. I instantly felt connected to the entire universe. I kind of was presented a choice. I had something called a life review where I was shown the impact that I had during my life on the world around me. It wasn't judgmental, it was more subjective. It was, you know, this is the energy that you put into the world during your life, and I love you, I'm part of you. I went in for a routine hysterectomy, and it was during or after the hysterectomy that I actually experienced my death. 
I was out of recovery and in my private room when I awoke at about 9, 9.30 in the evening. I didn't feel any pain. It was just this feeling as though every last drop of blood had drained from my body. And I tried to reach for the nurse, but I was too weak to reach the little buzzer that they had placed by the side of my bed. I then felt this sensation coming up from my feet, a numbing type thing. And then all of a sudden, I felt a movement in my chest. And then there was a sound like a pop. My spirit came up out of my body in a very tremendous speed. And I could look down and see my body laying on the bed. While no two near-death experiences are the same, those of us that research them see a very consistent pattern of elements. Very often there's that life-threatening event. The person's nearly dead, they're unconscious, or they may not even have a heartbeat. At that time, they have what's called an out-of-body experience. Consciousness separates from the body and typically goes above the body. They may then go into or through a tunnel. They often see a mystical, unearthly, brilliant light at the end of the tunnel. At the end of the tunnel, they may enter an unearthly, beautiful realm. They may see their deceased relatives at, the, at loving reunions, even deceased pets. By this time, they're typically feeling overwhelming, positive emotions. They really feel like this realm that seems unearthly to us is really their home. When I came down and looked at my physical body lying on the bed, then I knew that I had died and I thought, oh my God, I'm dead. I don't know how I died, but I'm, I'm dead. Then suddenly appearing by the side of my bed were three ancient looking men, ancient in that they were old, but they were beyond old. And they explained to me that I had prematurely died. I wanted so much to see my family. So I went out the window and I traveled to my home my husband was sitting in a chair reading a newspaper. So I went over and stood by him. And I felt concerned that he didn't know I had died and neither did my children. And I worried about them. I worried how their life would be should I not be there for them. And as I wondered about that, I could see each child I just saw each phase of their life and that their lives would be fine even without me. So I felt content as any mother would that you know what, they're gonna be okay. Then I went back, traveled quickly back to the hospital bed and was drawn into this immense tunnel. There was sound, there was music, there were chimes. It was extremely relaxing, very comfortable and I went through the tunnel, into the tunnel, and traveled into this black space. Then suddenly I saw a form at the very end of the light. And as I approached the light, I could see the figure moving with arms spread out like this, and he was Jesus Christ. And I reached for him and put my arms around him as he held me too. And he said, it's not yet your time. It's not yet your time. Some angels or guardians or guards or supporters of him and me came. There were three women and he said, show her everything that she needs to know. Then they took me to a garden and they said for me to be there, to stay here, enjoy yourself. I went through the garden and walked, and it was beautiful beyond any description. You just simply can't even imagine the colors and the beauty, the flowers of every kind and other kinds that we don't even have here. This is when I learned that I wouldn't remember a great deal of what was going on. I call these men warring angels in that they came into the garden and they said, are you ready for more? And I says, yes, I am. And they took me and, and it was like a freedom of flight. It's like we just rose up into the air and we just went. And we traveled from planet to planet. And then Jesus said, 
that I needed to return back to Earth. And I says, oh, please, I can't go. I hate him. Excuse me. I didn't want to, to leave the love that I felt there, the total acceptance. I saw a beautiful man that I recognized to be the Father, God. And I ran to him and fell at his feet, my head on his lap. And he said, you have a mission and I want you to see what that mission entails, then you must go back. I remember traveling quickly. The next thing I knew, I saw my body. I went into the body because, not because I wanted to, but because I was compelled to. And I felt the dark dankness of it. The human body compared to the spirit body is so, so different. At the end of the experience, there's often a choice about whether to stay in that beautiful realm or to return to their earthly life. When that decision is ultimately made and they return to their earthly life and they recover, then they can share their near-death experience. I was shown how my death would impact my family. So I was shown my two children, who at the time were five and two years old. I was shown what their grief would be like. I was shown how that would impact them throughout their life, that they would miss me, but that they would be okay, that their life would thrive. Another person that really stood out was my husband's grief. That grief was, I felt it, I felt his grief like it was mine. It was really intense. I wanted to float down to my husband's body, which I could see sleeping on the fold-out couch. I wanted to tell him that everything would be okay. Anthony kind of squeezed my shoulder lovingly and he smiled at me like I had answered some unspoken question. And then Anthony and the light both started going this way and I started falling backwards into my body. Going back into my body hurt. Leaving my body did not. It was like jumping into an ice cold pool after being in a sauna. It's hard for me to say it was a miraculous healing, but I suddenly started expelling all the blood that had been pooling in my abdominal cavity. I expelled over two liters of blood and 800 cc's of fist-sized clots. It scared the entire nursing staff. It scared my family. I mean, it's scary when you see that much blood coming out of a person. But what was odd was that my vitals were improving. I was actually stabilizing, not getting worse. The doctors still don't know what caused my illness to begin with, why my symptoms were happening, exactly where I was bleeding from internally, nor do they know really how I healed from all of that. We've had people blind from birth that have highly visual near-death experiences, and that's medically inexplicable. We have near-death experiences that occur under general anesthesia, and that should be, if you will, doubly impossible to have your heart stop while you're under anesthesia, and yet there are typical near-death experiences. In addition to that, when you think about it, when you have a cardiac arrest or your heart stops beating instantly, blood stops flowing to the brain. 10 to 20 seconds after that, the electroencephalogram, or EEG, a measure of brain electrical activity, goes absolutely flat. It should be impossible to have any kind of a conscious experience, and yet by the hundreds, people report near-death experiences. So at my checkup, I asked my surgeon, I said, I, I saw a light while I was in the hospital, and I was really careful. And he said, oh, I've I've heard of that happening to people, but I've never had a patient tell me that. And I said, well, how close was I? And he said, Jesse, you were walking the line there for a while. It was later, five years later, 
that I went to my doctor and I said, something happened to me. I need to discuss it with you and I want to know if you had any idea that I died. And he said, yes, I, 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 I was aware of that. Following a near-death experience, as you can imagine, it's generally very life transformative. People that have a near-death experience, of course, almost uniformly don't fear death. From their perspective, they know what lies beyond death's door and they know that it's wonderful. Of course, they have an increased belief in afterlife for exactly the same reason, but their values also change. They tend to become less materialistic, more loving. They may change professions or they may change relationships if they can't express their new values. I started doing service because service is our best gift to God. When we're helping other people, it is to be of service to them. So I went to the hospital here in Seattle and volunteered at the Cancer Research Center where I could work with the dying patients as well as their families. So I did that for several years. I began going to various church organizations to speak, to share. I want to go back and I had Jesus promise me that he will return me to where I left when I had to leave him. When I started to kind of I guess, rejoin the world, I felt this intense love for everyone. Not that I was necessarily a selfish person beforehand, but this new feeling was that I cared about everybody I saw. I have no fear of dying. Not that I ever really considered death before, but I could die right now and I would be perfectly okay with that.